Understanding Altenoberic Vertigo by Dr. Payal Razdan and Dr. Neil Pollock, performed by Dr. Franz Cronier. The unequal equalization of one's ears can cause a type of dizziness described as altenoberic vertigo. It's a common cause of vertigo that occurs in divers. Let's start with the pressure environment. Learning how to equalize ear pressure is part of every diver's basic entry-level training. Whether you're breathing compressed gas or free diving, whenever depth is changed, one has to equalize the middle ear pressure. Most divers are able to equalize without major difficulty, using various techniques such as jaw movement or valsalva. And eventually they settle on a technique that requires the least amount of effort. And eventually choose a technique that requires the least amount of effort. Most divers also understand that failing to equalize properly during descent will cause discomfort or may even run the risk of injury. But what divers don't necessarily realize is that unequal equalizing of the ears can produce dizziness or alternobaric vertigo. Changes in ambient pressure affect the gas volumes in air spaces within our body. These internal spaces include the lungs, sinuses, middle ear, intestines and possibly even the teeth. Adjacent spaces to the body may include the artificially added mask or dry suit and sometimes the outer ear in the case of plugs or hoodies. Some equalization occurs automatically for healthy divers under normal conditions. The gas volume in the lungs, for instance, and those in the sinuses equalize continuously while breathing. The gastrointestinal system generally accommodates pressure changes quite easily. The teeth as well, if they are properly cared for and have professionally done fillings. Gas volumes in dry suits and masks are easily adjusted, either with auto-inflate or exhaust mechanisms, or by exhaling through the nose. Gas in the ear canal under a tight-fitting hoodie can be eliminated by briefly pulling the hoodie away and allowing water to enter. This then leaves the middle ear, which needs to be actively equalized during descent and passively equalizes during ascent. It is the difficulty with equalizing the middle ear that can cause problems for divers. The purpose of pressure equalizing techniques is to open the eustachian tube, which is the duct or tube that connects the back of the throat with the middle ear. The eustachian tube allows gas to pass through these two spaces, thereby balancing the pressure. On the surface, where ambient pressure changes are small, equalization of the middle ear does not require a lot other than maybe a yawn, swallowing, laughing or chewing. But during descent and in diving situations, it is usually inadequate to rely on these passive techniques and one needs to actively equalize the ears. The eardrums are connected to the inner ear through a series of three bones called the malleus or hammer, the incus or anvil, and the stapes or stirrup. These mechanical amplifiers connect the eardrum to the oval window. The oval window is a membrane that communicates with the inner ear fluid. Changes in pressure and position of the eardrum can therefore be transmitted to the inner ear and affect the fluid-filled semicircular canals in the vestibular system. The brain then interprets this as motion or orientation. If the right and left cochlea receive different stimuli because the eardrum and the ossicles or bones are in different positions, this may result in the sensation of vertigo, called alternobaric vertigo. So what is alternobaric vertigo? It's a highly descriptive term coined by Claes Lundgren in 1965, which basically means other pressure or differing pressure. Vertigo is the perception that the body or its surroundings are spinning or moving. And ABV, or alternobaric vertigo, arises from this unequal pressure between the two middle ears, resulting in unequal stimulation of the inner ear. A jerking movement of the eyes may result, which is called nystagmus, 
It may also cause nausea and even vomiting in severe cases. In addition to the visual disturbances, alternobaric vertigo may be accompanied by a feeling of fullness or even ringing in the ears or muffled hearing. Some divers may notice a hissing or squeaking sound indicating pure equalization, which corresponds with the onset of ABV. It seems that women are slightly more susceptible to ABV than men are. ABV can occur during descent, but it's more common during ascent, particularly around the safety stop. The challenge that divers face is to make sure they don't make the situation worse. And so they need to control the stationary position when the symptoms arise until they resolve naturally. If symptoms of vertigo persist, this indicates a more serious situation. Divers who experience ABV repeatedly should seek medical evaluation. ABV is actually quite common. A retrospective study found 27% of subjects reported ABV, whereas 14% of prospective students, whereas a prospective study found 14% of subjects had ABV. How does one reduce the risks? Well, equalizing techniques can make a big difference, as well as not diving when congested. The need to exert high pressures to equalize may be a warning sign. Some divers find it easier to equalize in the head up position. Performing gentle, active equalization during descent will help reduce stress on the ear structures. Divers who experience frequent ABV should reevaluate their equalizing techniques and certainly their buoyancy control. This is, of course, after being cleared to dive following medical examination. Any condition that causes inflammation or swelling and congestion of the ears and sinuses would increase the chances of ABV. Divers who choose to dive in spite of symptoms are putting themselves at risk. Diving with congestion may cause a reverse block, which is part of the mechanism of ABV. If reverse block and ABV occur, the diver needs to hold their position until symptoms subside, but in certain cases it may be necessary to return to the surface either way. Do it as slowly as possible, but make sure that you don't run out of air. Some divers may rely on nasal decongestants as a solution, but if this decision is made, four to five days is the longest these may be used or rebound congestion may occur, making it even worse. When divers experience ABV, the most important thing is to stop their ascent and to wait for the symptoms to resolve. Avoid forceful equalization and remain calm. Try to hold a fixed depth by using a fixed visual reference or some physical feature like a rope or seafloor or another diver to orient you. The sudden onset of vertigo can be frustrating and certainly disorienting for divers. If it happens during the beginning of a dive, it's best to end it. Towards the end of the dive, ensure that the ascent is slow. What should be done if symptoms persist? If vertigo persists for anything more than 10 minutes after a dive, or is accompanied by other symptoms that may be consistent with other medical conditions, including decompression illness, medical advice should be sought. Middle ear barotrauma with rupture of the drum may cause temporary dizziness or vertigo underwater, but usually this is alleviated as soon as the water reaches body temperature. After the dive, the diver may still experience some discomfort and pressure in the ear. Eardrum rupture or middle ear barotrauma usually requires decongestants and sometimes antibiotics. Non-perforated injuries may take a few days to heal, whereas a ruptured eardrum typically takes six weeks or more. Sometimes surgical repair of the eardrum would be required. Inner ear barotrauma is a pressure injury to the inner ear structures, and this would not resolve quickly after diving. Therefore, divers that experience prolonged severe vertigo, hearing loss or ringing in the ears after diving should be examined to exclude this condition. 
divers can typically return to diving after an eardrum perforation, but any ear barrow trauma may be a long-term contraindication. Inner ear decompression sickness can also present with symptoms similar to inner ear barrow trauma, but are usually associated with deeper diving and mixed gas.